Hello, hello guys. It is Jolene here from The Best Vinyl Covers and today I'm doing another super handy tutorial for our Cricut beginners. So this one is all about fonts and finding fonts online and how to get them to Cricut Design Space and what to do with a font once you have it there. So if you want to learn all about fonts and Cricut Design Space, this is the video for you. So first of all, um, what I like to do is to start off a lot of my searching in Google and I love going to Defont. Defont is a website that has fonts, funnily enough, and it has a lot of free, it's basically free fonts. Um, so you can find awesome fonts here, grab it for free and download it. There are plenty of other sites. Some of them will charge you a bit of money. Usually you can buy fonts only for a few dollars, but they can be quite pricey as well. So remember that a lot of these fonts, handwritten fonts and stuff, there's actually a person sitting behind the computer designing these fonts. So if you're paying for it, keep that in mind because it makes it a lot easier to pay for when you know that you're supporting another creative person rather than just thinking you're handing out money to download um, a computer font. So if we are here, you will see that there are tons of really awesome fonts that you can download. You can even sort it out by what you want. So a lot of us like script and we really love handwritten fonts. Um, it's probably one of the most popular ones that you can pick from and you would simply go to that section. So what I wanted to point out though is when you're looking for fonts, you have to think about how the Cricut machine is going to cut it out. This big bold font where no letters are touching, Cricut's going to handle this one pretty well. And it's going to be much easier to weed and to transfer because you've got such a big surface area on the bold font to work with, right? However, when you're working with more delicate fonts like this one, for example, or Barcelona even, it will be more tricky to actually get it to transfer properly. It will be more tricky to actually weed. And if you even have a look at this font, you can see that this connection here between the O and the R, it's actually pretty wonky. Let me zoom in for you guys and I'll show you. See how that connection isn't really that well? That's going to be a bit of an issue for your cutting machine to try and cut like that. Um, but it also just doesn't look as smooth as what it should. Now in saying that, you can work with thin lines for sure. I've worked with some of the thinnest fonts, but I can tell you that it was a pain in the bum. And I can tell you that it took me a lot longer and brought on quite a few more um, harsh words than these thick fonts did. So if you're starting off, then I would definitely say stay away from something like this and stick something like, pick like something like this, that's nice and big and bold, okay? This one, that would be easy to work with. All right, but let's go ahead. I wanna pick a flowy font because they are a bit trickier to work with when it comes to design space. So let's see, I think I've already got Moonbright on my computer. I like Serenity, Homework's not bad. I like the Swedish Strawberry, but it's not um, connecting, so that's not gonna be a good example for this one. There's so many cool fonts. I love fonts, and I know that if you've got a Cricut, you're probably going to develop that same excitement. I really like this glittery one. I'm gonna try that one. Okay, so once you find what you want, you can um, click on this or you can click on the download button straight away. But if you click on this, you can actually try out your word. So let's say you knew you wanted to cut a word. Let's say I wanted to cut my daughter's name. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I like the look of it. You can put, type it in there and press submit and it's gonna actually show you what it will come up as, which is really cool. Um, and it will help you decide whether you want that font or not. So, um, note that this is for personal use only, which means that you can't sell products if you get in the font from here. Uh, so if you have a Cricut because you want to run a shop through Etsy or whatever the case might be, 
you have to find fonts that have a commercial um, license and usually that means you've got to pay for it so you can grab the commercial one from here but for now you click on download and it's going to download a zip file to your computer so hopefully you know where your files download mine goes to the download folder so it's pretty straightforward so from there you want to unzip so you right click and you go to extract all okay so that means we're extracting the zip file because Cricut can't read a zip file at all so you extract all I'm gonna put it in the same spot and there it is so now we have a folder and inside this folder we have your text okay and all you need to do if you've installed fonts before is to double click on it and you can click the install button now we're installing this font to our computers our laptops whatever it is that you're working on okay it's not installing it to Cricut Design Space but because Cricut Design Space is loaded up from your computer let me find Cricut Design Space um, because it's loaded up from your computer it's going to load up your system things as well okay so you need to make sure that Cricut Design Space is closed then download the font and then open it up because otherwise it wouldn't realize that there's a new thing to load up so if you try and find a font that you downloaded and it's not there it possibly could be that you had it open beforehand so close down Cricut Design Space and reopen it up and have a look and see if it's there that way around not all fonts work with Cricut Design Space so if you've done that and it's still not coming up that could be the problem but fortunately there are loads of fonts and you can very easily just go and pick something else so let's write out my daughter's name again and go and find this font so type it out there go to your font which is up here and click on that so you've got three bar three options at the top you've got all system Cricut and then you've got your search option oh, you've actually got filters as well all basically means absolutely all the fonts whether they're Cricut fonts or whether they're on your computer lives here all mixed up together which sometimes can get a bit tricky if you go to Cricut you will see all the Cricut design space fonts this a means Cricut access which is a monthly membership if you don't know what it is so if you subscribe to this monthly membership you get to use a lot of stuff on Cricut design space without having to pay for it so if you do a lot of projects in a month this could be a really good way to save money okay especially if you're a beginner if you're more advanced you might prefer to get a lot of stuff off of design space and bring it in but when you start off it's really a good idea just to stick to keeping it simple um, and you'll find that some of them have got prices so this is a five dollar four dollar ninety nine font okay now we've downloaded this one which means it's on our system so you click on that and this is all of the fonts that you have on your computer so these are the same fonts that you will be able to access if you have word on your computer or Adobe on your computer or anything like that okay and what we can do is search for this specific one so it was glittery and there it is see how it's automatically just come up it's as easy as that guys so now you pop it in but you can see we've got a new problem okay so I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna drag it bigger so that you guys can see see how it's got all of these spaces in between it but it's not connected the way that it should be Cricut Design Space does that for us which is a pain in the bum but there is an easy way to get around it it's just a bit more fiddly so we've got a few things we can do from here on number one we can reduce the space between the letters with this letter space option so I typically put in a zero here and start off at that point see how it's brought it closer together and now you can reduce it down even further which has attached all of our letters perfectly that looks pretty good but now it's caused problems over here with the A and the V okay but that's where I start off because I try and get as many of the letters attached so that I don't have to fiddle with them now what we need to do is to ungroup the letters so here is your ungroup button and once we click that you can move around each letter by itself so I can pick this A up and I can actually move it to where I want it I can that way reattach things that needs to be attached or play with it a bit 
it's easier to do this when you've got a really big size to play with you can always reduce it down after but when you don't get this connection very well let's say you do that because it was small and you didn't realize that little tail was just in the wrong spot over there and you weld it down you might find that this whole letter colors in and you'll be really confused about what happened and what happens is it's just not attached um, connected properly because we need to make sure that that little tail is disappears completely from view like that okay now currently if you click on this you can see each letter has its own box which means that Cricut sees this essentially as um, it sees it essentially as one two three four five six different pictures and if I go to make it, it's going to rearrange these to try and save space. So see how this is now all over the spot and they're not attached anymore after all my work. And I mean, I can't even really use that. My daughter's name is Avalee, not Alvia. So we can fix that problem by highlighting all of these letters and clicking the weld button. So when we weld something, we essentially glue things together. Welding is for things that touch. Okay. So when you weld things, see how it's got this picture down here and you've got a circle and you've got a square, but it gets rid of the lines in between where these two are touching. That's what welding does. So welding is going to glue this E to this E, but it's also going to get rid of this whole section of this tail that's hidden away behind it so that your Cricut machine doesn't go and cut this tail which essentially at the moment will be cutting right into your E. Okay. So with welding, it glues it together, but it also deletes things that we don't need the Cricut machine to see. If you were to attach, people get very confused between these two. It is going to put the letters all in the right spot on your mat. And often people think, yes, that's what I need to do. But you'll find that your Cricut machine is going to cut this little tail that's behind your E and it will cut right into your next E and it will be confusing because you'll be like, why did it do that? It's because you used the attach button. So we don't want to do attach. So detach and then I need to weld these together. So you click weld. Now from here we can resize things if we want. Um, but what you need to note is now that it's welded, it's seen as a image and no longer as a font. So now all of our options like choosing the changing the font and stuff has disappeared. So you can't play with it in that way anymore. So you need to do all of your picking of your fonts and all of that sort of stuff before you weld. Okay, because now it's an image in the software's eyes. But when you go to make it, you're going to see that we've got it exactly the way that we want and the machine will cut it as one piece perfectly. Now, what I want to point out is if you didn't have a flowy font, right? Let's do this. And I change this into something like this, Arial Black, simple, right? This is not really a flowy font. We still have a bit of issues with spacing here and here that we could fix. So if we were to do that, you highlight that, you can reduce this down, but because I don't mind the spacing here, instead of reducing it down, I'm just going to ungroup it so that I can move this closer together. Now I want to make sure that Google, uh, Google, I keep on saying Google, Cricut sees this as one image, right? Because it sees it as separate images at the moment. So you draw a box around all of those. And this time, because they're not touching, we can just use the attach button. Okay, so weld is for touching and you can see that on the image here. And attach is kind of like putting a paper clip around a lot of papers so that you can keep all the papers in one spot. Right, that's why it's got a paper clip. So paper clip. Okay. And now that you've got one box, you know that Cricut is going to see this as one image and it's going to cut it out in this order. So now let's say that you wanted to cut out both of these. If I go to make it, it's going to pop it again in a space effective way. 
but it hasn't left a lot of space in between our two words, which can be really, really tricky to work with, especially when we're doing vinyl and we want to cut in between these two. So what we can do is we can decide how much space we want in between them. So I can arrange them like this, right? So that I've got plenty of cut space, highlight both. And again, we want to use the paper clip to keep them in place. And now we've got one image again. So the two boxes changed into one box, one image, one image gets cut exactly the way that it is. And when we click on make it, you've got a big space in between so that you can actually cut it exactly the way that you want. So I hope that was really, really helpful for you guys to try and understand all of this. When it comes to sizes, you can either use this little arrow and click and drag. If you want to be more precise, you can actually enter your measurements up at the top and that will resize it for you. Um, so there's your different options of how to change the sizing of your font. All right, that's it. That's what I have for the font tutorial for this time around. If you would like to see any other tutorials or you have questions about something I didn't cover, please do drop us a comment so that we can help you out. And of course, there are plenty of other videos that you can watch as well. And you can hop over to our blog, thebestvinylcutters.com, where you can find loads of project ideas. So make sure to follow us so that you can see all of the future videos coming out. All right, guys. Bye for now.